So to get your structure into here, actually, so first of all, if you want to delete an object, so this default cube, you can click on it, press X on your keyboard, and you'll get this delete option. So you can just press click on it or press D, and I'll delete it. Okay, so you can go File, Import. From there, go down to GLTF 2.0, .glb GLTF, click on that. Now, Chimera X probably saved it out to your desktop. So you can click on the object. OK, so we're getting closer to the file that you would have downloaded from, from Canvas. There's one more step that I've done for you that's um, just a, which is just cleaning and organization. So we don't really have to do anything. So over here, in this is the outliner pane. It's like looking at your the folder where you store all your documents. So what we want to do is just add some folders to keep it nice and organized. So if you click on your outliner and press C, you'll see that you'll make a new folder automatically. So I want to rename this. You can just double click it. And I'm going to name this complex. Now if you click, stay clicked on your folder and press C again, it'll make a new folder inside of that one. So I'm going to call this one MHC. And if I go back to my complex, click on it again, press C again, I'll make a new collection. And I'm going to call this peptide. OK, so your structure right out of Chimera X has all these really distracting dotted lines. So that's because of the organization and the way that the Blender file, the Chimera X file saves it out. So we can adjust this by, if you just click on this, right click it, and just say delete, it'll delete the structure that contains it, and you'll get the stuff that's inside. So ribbons represents the protein, and atoms is the peptide. So I'm just going to take my ribbons and drop it in the MHC folder. Now I want to, atoms is still contained within something, so it has all these dotted lines. So I'm just going to do that same thing. Click on it, right click, and just press delete. And that'll open up all of the atoms. So you can just click on one, scroll to the bottom, select them all, and then just drag and drop that into peptide. So there you go. The scene is nice and organized. This will make it a lot easier to manage. Now the first thing I want to show is if you want to select an object, so the protein for example, you just click on it, right click, and say select objects. This allows us to select a bunch of different objects all at the same time. So we press select objects. So now we've selected the protein. And now over here on your left hand, these are the different um, manipulations that we can do. So if we want to move our object, you can press move. And you'll see that you get this handle that appears at the center of your scene. This is a little distracting having the handle way down here and the object that we move up there. So what you can do is go Object, then you can go to Set Origin, and Origin to Geometry. And this will move the handle to the center of your object. If you're thinking ahead, you might think, OK, well now we need to do that for peptide. But if you select your object, you'll see that it's actually already centered. So we're good. So at this point, I think we've caught up with the project files for this lesson. So, the first thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to move our structure to the center of our scene. So you can do that by selecting complex, which now you'll remember has both the protein and the peptide. Right click that, select objects. So now this is, I think, the first, um, first real thing that you have to do in Blender. So over here, this is a, a navigation scheme. So if you press on one of these axes, you can see it from a orthographic view, so without the perspective. So if I just press on Z, I'm now looking at the scene from the top. If I press on X, I'm now looking at it from the front. Negative Z, I'm now looking at it from the bottom. And this makes it really easy to move it to the center. So I'm just going to press Z, move it to the center. Now I'm going to go over and press X, and you'll see now the X axis is still off. So I'll move it to the center. 
and now you have it perfectly centered in your scene. Okay. Now, if you go over here to your, this is called the navigation gizmo, you'll see this camera picture. If you select the camera picture, you'll see that our object is massive. And so we're going to need to scale it down. So I would go back to complex, right click it, select objects. Now over here, I'll introduce you to the next manipulation, which is scale. If you click on scale, you'll see this white ring that appears around the um, scaling handles. So if you grab that white ring, you can really easily scale up or scale it down. So I'm just going to get it small enough so that it fits better in my scene. Maybe grab the move again, grab one of the handles and drag it. So now if I go back into my camera, you can see that now the whole structure is contained within um, the camera view. Now we can go back and practice scale again. Scale it back up just a little bit. Maybe move it down just a tad. Okay. Now the next thing that we're going to do is practice rotation. So that's this middle one right here where it says rotate. If you click on rotate, you'll get all of these um, circles representing the different axes. So you can grab them. So for example, the blue one is going to be rotating along your x-axis. So I can rotate it. And then if you want, you can also just grab the middle of this and free rotate. So I'm going to rotate it up. So it looks like the MHC is looking right at us. So move it up like that. I'm going to move it again. Press on the Move tool. And then lastly, just scale it up a little bit. So that's looking really nice. Now, let's say you want to uh, make more objects. So one thing that I thought it would look cool is if there was some more peptides just floating around in the background. So it looked like this one had preferentially bound. So what you can do is go over to Complex. Since we've nicely organized our um, different structures right here, you can just click on Peptide, right click it, and say Duplicate Collection. This will automatically generate a new peptide structure. So now I want to add two, so I'll just do that same thing. Duplicate collection. Now I have two peptides. They didn't appear here because they're directly underneath the first one. So I'll go ahead and select peptide two, right click it, and say select objects. Now I'm free to move that one, and you can see that the other one is still in the same spot. So what I'm thinking is I'll move it over here to this corner, practice rotating. I kind of think it would be nice if it was at a slight angle. And then free rotate by just grabbing the middle. So maybe we can see a little bit of that tryptophan in the back. And then move it back down. Okay. Now let's select the other peptide. Select object. Now this one I want to put in the bottom right hand corner. I'm going to rotate it a little bit, something that looks, that looks nice. And then I want to move it backwards. So I'm pressing my middle button on my mouse. For those on a trackpad, it's shift two fingers. And I'm, oh sorry, just, just two fingers is rotate. Okay, so then I'm going to click on move. And you can see that I have these different handles. Or actually, it'd probably be easiest just to click on your Z axis to see it from the top. Your, our camera's right here. So if I want this peptide to be way in the background, all blurred out, I can just grab it, move it. And so this is what it would look like from the top. And we can jump back to the camera view. And then we can adjust it, being confident that it's far enough in the background. OK, so that's. Um, the end of the first section, which is converting molecular structures to 3D meshes and manipulating those objects in the viewport.